Welcome to this video on multidimensional arrays in Java. My name's Andy Wicks, and in this program I'm going to show you how multiple dimensions work in Java. What you're creating, in effect, is a table, and you can specify how big this table is going to be. In my case, I'm going to use a mathematical example. No, this video is not about mathematics, it's merely using some maths as an example. Here I'm going to take a matrix, which is a flash mathematical word for a table, and I'm going to find its inverse. The mathematics of what we're doing is irrelevant. What does matter is how we go about doing it in Java. The first thing I need to do is to set up the two-dimensional arrays. What we've got is a 2 by 2 table of numbers. I'm going to declare this as double, in other words, something that could have a decimal point in it. That's always good if you're actually working with matrices. Even if the numbers you're using are whole numbers, they could end up as decimals by the time you get to the inverse. So our matrix needs to have two dimensions. How many rows and how many columns. And I'm setting it up to be two rows and two columns. The inverse matrix also has to have two rows and two columns. And I also need to account for something called the determinant, which is a double. What that is is irrelevant. The important thing is that all the data types are the same. Now in this section here, I'm populating the table matrix. I'm defining its different elements the different boxes that it has. And I'm saying that in the top left hand corner I want the number 1 and to its right the number 2. On the second row I want the first number to be 3 and the second number to be 4. We now have the data in our matrix. Now I can do the processing. Take my word for the fact that the determinant is given by this formula and that having found the determinant I can find the inverse elements of the matrix by using this technique. Why it should be that is not really relevant. That's a mathematical problem. But the two matrices are now defined. I can now output the matrix that I want. The inverse matrix. And that's what I'm doing in this section down here. I'm outputting each individual element so that I can see what it's become. Now let me show you that in action. Here is the inverse matrix. So the inverse of 1, 2, 3, 4 is minus 2, 1, 1 1.5, minus 0.5. The important thing is that I created different arrays with rows and columns so that you could then put the numbers in that you wanted and then manipulate them in any way you liked. Similarly you could have three dimensions or four or five if that's how you wanted to set it up. Each pair of brackets shows another dimension and it's down to you the programmer to keep track of which are rows, which are columns, which are depth, which are time and so on. 